OpenAI and Anthropic have reached agreements with the U.S. government to share models in advance of them being released. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. The discussion for the last couple of weeks has just been nonstop regulation. Of course, the big focus has been California's SB 1047. The controversial bill was passed by the state assembly earlier this week, then ratified yesterday by the Senate, and is now moving on to the desk of Governor Gavin Newsom for signature or veto. One of the companies against the bill has been OpenAI. The company had said, for example, that they were worried that it would slow down progress, and they also argued that the rule should be federal, not state by state. Said Chief Strategy Officer Jason Kwan, a federally driven set of AI policies rather than a patchwork of state laws will foster innovation and position the U.S. to lead the development of global standards. As a result, we join other AI labs, developers, experts, and members of California's congressional delegation in respectfully opposing SB 1047. Interestingly, then, People were very interested when on Thursday afternoon, OpenAI CEO Sam Altman tweeted that the company had reached an agreement with the U.S. government around pre-release testing of their most advanced models. He also got a subtweet in about SB 1047. Altman tweeted, We are happy to have reached an agreement with the USAI Safety Institute for pre-release testing of our future models. For many reasons, we think it's important that this happens at the national level. U.S. needs to continue to lead. This is not the first time that Altman has made the argument of the importance of U.S. leadership. In July, he published an op-ed in the Washington Post called Who Will Control the Future of AI? A democratic vision for artificial intelligence must prevail over an authoritarian one. Altman basically argued in that piece that it's either going to be the U.S. and the democratic nation of the world, or it's going to be China. You might or might not remember that Altman had also talked about the fact that in a different world, open AI would have actually come from the government. Back in 2023, another Post reporter was hanging out at the OpenAI headquarters in San Francisco when Altman said, OpenAI should have been a government project, right? He continued, in a different time, it would have been. At a minimum, we should have gotten government funding, which we couldn't. We tried and failed. That piece continues, Altman said that in 2017, he pitched officials at the White House, the Defense Department, and the Energy Department on investing in the company behind ChatGPT. We said, we need more funding than we can raise as a nonprofit. Would you like to give us money? This is something important for the U.S., and it just died in the bureaucracy. The point of this is that Altman clearly has a sense of the national security and geopolitical significance of this change. But back to this agreement, the agreement is technically between Anthropic and OpenAI and the USAI Safety Institute. The USAI Safety Institute is housed within the National Institute of Standards and Technology and was one of the things that come out of Biden's executive order on AI. There are about page reads, our efforts will initially focus on the priorities assigned to NIST under President Biden's executive order on AI. The Safety Institute will pursue a range of projects, each dedicated to a specific challenge that is key to our mission. These will initially include advancing research and measurement science for AI safety, conducting safety evaluations of models and systems, and developing guidelines for evaluations and risk mitigations. Now, as to this deal, they call this a -a first-of-a-kind agreement between the U.S. government and industry that will, quote, enable formal collaboration on AI safety research, testing, and evaluation. Details are scant, but the core is simple. The U.S. AI Safety Institute is going to get access to major new models before they are released publicly. The question, of course, is whether they will have the ability to actually delay the release of those models should there be a disagreement around safety implications. How much influence will the AI Safety Institute and by extension the U.S. government have on what type of guardrails are put in place? For some, this was a positive advancement. Zvi Mashowitz, who is one of the most thoughtful writers when it comes to AI safety issues, wrote, Highly welcome news that they and Anthropic will now do this. But he also added, amazing to see the flood of absolutely vile responses. True Ventures partner Gus Coldabella called out the state regulation issue. Gus writes, whether you like or dislike what Sam announced, he's subtly making an important point about state regulation of AI. Putting aside SB 1047's destructiveness towards open source AI and AI innovation in general, which has been overwhelmingly demonstrated by many others, its passage could start a state-by-state legislative arms race, and that's good for nobody but the lawyers. Imagine if 10, 30, or even 50 different states enact their own AI regulatory regimes, each with different expensive requirements, periodic reports, liability standards, and new bureaucracies. Resources that developers could spend on the kind of innovation we want are instead soaked up by compliance, if companies can stomach the liability risk to begin with. It's a strategic imperative to have the U.S. lead in AI. We should not stumble into a patchwork of state laws that discourages innovation before it begins. A16Z partner Martin Casado, who's been one of the loudest opponents of SB 1047, responded and wrote, Yup, also it's much more aligned with how we've treated state-of-the-art systems in the past. Gus used that as a chance to clarify, My post is certainly not advocating a rush to regulate it at the national level. God, no. Just a call to avoid the privacy lawification, i.e. different and often irreconcilable state-by-state standards of AI. However, that's basically where the positive takes ended. George Hotz wrote, 
Tell me how it feels to have your company infiltrated by the deep state. What do they threaten you with? AI entrepreneur Bindu Reddy writes, the government testing AI models. Yeah, sure, they are the experts. Expect delays of two to 10 years. Maria Simplified writes, POV, it's 2040 and two government agents are knocking on your door. You've used algebra in an unsafe way and now you must surrender all your mathematical formulas before someone else gets exposed. There are about a million others that have that same tone. Then of course there were the joke posts like this one from Matthew Berman, who shared a picture of a sad Steve Carell saying, me when I know the feds have seen GPT-5 and I haven't even tried GPT-40 voice. Boy, do I relate to that one as I sit here with this AI podcast and this AI company and no advanced voice mode. Others pointed out that this seems to add credence to the big piece that Leopold Aschenbrenner, formerly of OpenAI, wrote earlier this year. One section that was highlighted from Aschenbrenner's piece, somewhere around 26, 27 or so, the mood in Washington will become somber. People will start to viscerally feel what is happening. They will be scared. From the halls of the Pentagon to the backroom congressional briefings will ring the obvious question. The question on everybody's minds. Do we need an AGI Manhattan project? Slowly at first, then all at once, it will become clear this is happening. Things are going to get wild. This is the most important challenge for the national security of the United States since the invention of the atomic bomb. In one form or another, the national security state will get heavily involved. This inevitably is going to cause the U.S. to fall behind China. Bindu Reddy again writes, All this premature AI safety stuff will cause U.S. to give up its lead. China is already on par with us and may soon get ahead. Quen, Kling, and the Yi models are very good, and if the U.S. slows down, the world will be using their models. We may have another TikTok-like situation where they, not us, are number one. Notably on the same day, Quen announced that its latest model was better than GPT-40 based on the metrics, adding some amount of credence to that catch-up sort of sense. Then again, just to add a little extra wrinkle to this, The Economist recently wrote a piece asking whether Xi Jinping is an AI doomer. The interesting quote, China has its own AI doomers and they are increasingly influential. Yi Zheng of the Chinese Academy of Sciences believes that AGI models will eventually see humans as humans see ants. In other words, friends, it is just going to get weirder from here, so stay tuned. Thanks as always for listening or watching, and until next time, peace.